Google search is by far the most popular search engine on the web, but there are plenty of things that most people don't do when using Google that could make you a lot more efficient. So in this video, I'm gonna cover seven different things to make you a pro when using Google search. The very first one is using search modifiers. So basically when you type something, for example, I type in iPhone, but if I use the plus sign and then type in Android, for example, here, and then press enter, that will basically show me everything that has both Android and iPhone in the same story. So if you scroll down here, you'll see things with the word Android and the iPhone in the same search. So the plus in this case is a modifier. You could also use quotation marks, and this comes in really handy for quotes or for song lyrics, for example, or if you wanna find something from a specific text, you could go ahead and use the quotation marks and it will search exactly those words in the order that you type them. And that's the quotation marks. And there's another one, it's the asterisk sign on your keyboard that's shift eight. And that's used when you don't remember a specific word in a sequence of words. So in this case, maybe in this quote, I don't remember what this word is. So I would just replace that with the asterisk symbol and I'll press enter and it will go ahead and do its best to fill in that word for me and do the search. So this again comes in handy with quotes or something that you don't quite remember, but you remember some of the words, you could replace the rest of the words with the asterisk symbol. Next is searching specific websites using Google. So if you want to search inside of a website, this is how this works. You would type in your search and then you would type in site colon and the site name and then press enter and it would only search for whatever the word or the phrase is inside of the website that you typed out. So in this case, I'm gonna get geometry inside of Khan Academy so I could jump directly to that portion of the website. This one comes in very handy so you don't have to spend much time inside of a website looking for what you need. The next option is using related search inside of Google. So for example, you could type in related colon and then type in the website right here after that and press enter and it's going to show you all the different websites that are related to the website that you typed in so in this case yahoo bing some of the other search engines out there because i searched google.com so for example if i type apple.com it's going to show me related sites to apple.com like microsoft and so on Next is Google reverse image search. So instead of google.com, you could go to the images tab right here and it takes you to the image search, but you'll have this new icon search by image. If you click this, you could go ahead and either paste the image URL, or in this case, I'm gonna upload an image because I wanna know where it came from, or maybe I want a better version of that image, maybe a better resolution. So I'll choose the image. I'll go ahead and upload that file, the image that I just have saved on my computer, for example. And it pulls up that exact image that I just uploaded, and it shows me the source of that image. Over here, I could press all sizes and I could see different size of that image on different websites. And as you can see, the image I uploaded is being used by a variety of different websites. So I could get the source this way. And that's the reverse image search using Google image search. You could also search based on a date range. This one is really handy. So for example, let me look up Apple here. And over here, if I press tools on my search, this is showing me everything at any time that Google is finding out, but I could press this drop down and I could search just by these date ranges. So for example, if I want to see the latest information, I could choose past 24 hours and it's gonna only show me things that are based on the last 24 hours, like a lot of these news articles that came out regarding Apple. And I could always do a custom date range here and type in my date range from and to and find things from a specific date and time that Google will find for me. And this is really useful when you're doing research inside of Google on a specific date range and an article that you're looking to find. Next option is looking at cached version of websites. So let me show you what I mean. So for example, here with this website, if I click on this website and for some reason I can't access the website at that time, I could press this little drop down right here and click cached. What this does 
is it shows me the last time that Google looked into this website and crawled the website and saved it for us. So I could use this option to see an older version of the website if the current version is not available. And this is usually a few days old, but it is a very useful option, especially if the website is not accessible at that time. You could look at the cached version of the site. And finally, a lot of times Google uses your location and your browser history to show you search results relevant to you. But what you could do is if you're using a browser like Chrome, you could go to file and you could use incognito window. And then you could go to google.com and do your search and it won't take into account anything you've done on the browser before. So you will get results that anybody in the world will get regardless of their search history on Google or the cookies or your personal preferences. So using Google inside of an incognito window is a great way to see what other people are getting when they search Google. And those are seven different tips to make you a lot more efficient when using Google search. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for easy to follow tech videos posted every single day and I'll see you next time.